What's going on guys? It's me, JV, coming to you live this Friday morning. Today is uh, the 22nd already, August 22nd, 2024, TGIF. Payday today, man. It is payday today. I'll talk about that uh, on uh, at a later date. I'll make a video about uh, about payday. And speaking of payday, I just wanted to talk about the most difficult job that I've ever had in my entire life. And I've been I I've started you know I've been working really since the uh, since the time I was 15 years old. That's when I really started working. That's when I really uh, worked for the first time. And I believe it or not, I got a paycheck for the very first time when I was 15 years old. And that is precisely the most difficult job that I've ever had in my life. And let me talk about what it was and let me explain, you know, how things were. So back when I was 15 years of age, I lived in a town called Santa Paula. It's in uh, Southern California. For those of you that are from the U.S., it's uh, in uh, Ventura County. It's approximately, I would say, about 40 minutes northwest from Los, An Los Angeles, from L.A. And uh, I lived there between the ages of uh, 9 and eight, 19. Yeah, between the ages of 9 and 19. So I lived there for 10 years. And my father actually worked... Uh, and the farms and the farm fields picking up strawberries for a living. That's what he did his, his entire life. And so when I was going to high school, my dad had this idea that it was uh, a good idea to bring me over on the weekends and work uh, at least one day, maybe two days. Sometimes I work Saturday and Sundays, but for the most part, I only work Saturdays. And he wanted me to work on the fields picking up strawberries with him so that I would understand and I would appreciate how difficult and arduous it was for him to make a living and at the same time to encourage me to stay in school and uh, study for a uh, degree and a career or in a profession that would not be so difficult to make a living. So my day started around six in the morning we would well, actually at 4 45 in the morning I, I would wake up i would uh, get ready to uh to go to work i would get dressed up we would go for some coffee and some uh and a donut at the local donut shop there in santa paula and then we would make our trek down to the uh to the fields and we would start work at six in the morning and the job basically consisted of me and everybody else, of course, but the job consisted of going in between the uh, going on to the fields and basically kneeling down or bending down. I should say we were not even kneeling down. We were just bending down and just getting the strawberries out of the uh, out of the plants, just picking up the strawberries from the plants and and the conditions the weather conditions uh really didn't matter didn't matter if it was really hot didn't matter if it was cold which most of the time it was and didn't matter if your hands were totally numb and you couldn't even and you had some difficulties moving your wiggling your fingers and the breaks were basically your standard breaks you know one 15 minute break in the morning another 15 minute break in the afternoon and then a half an hour to an hour lunch i don't even remember how long the lunch break was i think it was for half an hour and uh that was it the rest of the time you were bending down picking up the strawberries inhaling all the fertilizer inhaling all the dust that was coming from the dirt as you were stepping down and you were picking up the strawberries and uh, I remember my hands were full of callus at the end of the day I had a lot of a couple of splinters on the on the tips of my fingers it was absolutely horrific it was terrible working in those conditions working uh, you know picking up strawberries and I remember telling or I remember my dad asking me consistently you know how are you feeling 
how are you doing? And every time in order to not, you know, to show a little bit of uh, macho on my part, I would always tell him, yeah, I'm doing fine. I'm doing okay. I was very slow, as you can imagine, 15 year old kid that didn't have any experience with with hand movement and the inclement weather. I wasn't the fastest guy in the world. So what we had to do was obviously pick up the strawberries, put them in a in a cardboard box, fill up the cardboard box and then take it to uh, for inspection, basically take it for some credits with the, the person that was keeping track of how many boxes we were turning in of, of strawberries. And the more boxes you collected, the more you would get paid. It, it was like a commission based type of a job. You were being paid based on your productivity. And so a lot of people were busting their asses off, including my dad. There was even women working there. I couldn't believe it. I mean, women were actually working very hard, picking up the strawberries. And um, you did, I don't, I think you did get a, yeah, you, do, you did get a, a base salary. It was basically minimum wage. It wasn't really that much money. The bulk of your income consisted on your commissions. The bulk of your income consisted on how good you were picking up strawberries and how productive you were. So at the end of the day, which was around 3.30, 4 o'clock in the, in the afternoon when the day was over, I remember my knees were f filled with uh, mud, my shoes, my my socks. Like I mentioned, I had splinters on my the tips of my fingers. I had blisters on my the palms of my hands. I mean, it was just a oh man, it was terrible. I was just dying after that that day of work. And I remember saying to myself back in the day, you know, how is it possible that these people work as many as six days a week? How can you possibly perform in such harsh working conditions for six consecutive days, not to mention the fact that you had to wake up at five in the morning each and every day. It was just a, a hell, it was just a hellish experience for me. And uh, I told my dad, and until this day, I always tell, you know, I always tell my dad, remember when you used to take me to your job when I was in high school on the weekends? That's the hardest job that I've ever had in my life. I, I, you know, I tell him from time to time. I remind him of of uh, of how you know how hard of a, a job it really was, and his response has always been, you know, I did it for your own good. The reason why I took you to work was because I wanted you to first of all realize how difficult it was for me to make a living, how difficult it was to make money back in the day, so that you wouldn't so that you wouldn't be asking for things, for materialistic things that were out of my budgetary reach. And second of all, I wanted to motivate you to focus your attentions on your studies, on your education, so that you wouldn't have to, you know, do these arduous jobs for a living for the rest of your life. And so I can appreciate, I can definitely appreciate those answers that my father always gave me and his intentions and what they they were and what he was trying to instill in me by taking me to the to the strawberry fields you know every weekend i remember i did this for about 6 months i don't think i went back after uh, once the, the the season ended i don't think i went back the following year so i think i only did it for about 6 months every weekend but it was uh it was hell it was hell that job was just absolutely difficult it was challenging and um, so when you guys go to the grocery store when you guys go to the produce department and you start picking up your your fruits and you start picking up your vegetables just understand and realize how difficult it is and how much work it takes to put those fruits and those vegetables in the uh, produce counter there at your local grocery store they don't pick themselves up by, themse by themselves. Somebody has to go to the fields and actually put in the hard work, which is not rewarded financially in any way, shape, shape or form. These folks are definitely not compensated as, as much as they should. They are not really seen as, you know, uh, speaking of the coronavirus, speaking of the pandemic 
uh, season. Remember when they were talking about these uh, essential workers that they had to work in the healthcare industry and the hospitality and the restaurant industry? Well, these folks do an essential job. These are absolutely essential workers and they deserve all the protection that they can get. Some of the states here in the U.S., and I know I'm going off on a tangent now, but it's, it's, very, diff it's very important to point this out. Some states in this country do not provide these, t these workers with the proper protection laws in order for them to not exhaust themselves and compromise their, their, their well-being while uh, executing these jobs. And I think that more and more politicians, more and more governor, governors and uh, uh, Congress people, they need to take a look at these essential workers. They need to take a, they, they they need to take care of these these uh, these workers because the, the 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 working conditions are not great. They're very very arduous. They're very dangerous. They can have a negative long term impact on your health by you know, inhaling all those fertilizers, all those chemicals that they put on these vegetables and these fruits. So, um, yeah, I, I hope I hope that the that the conditions have improved since you know since the '90s, since the 2000s, the last time that that my father was actually working there. But uh, yeah, that was that was a, a terribly terribly difficult job. So I just wanted to uh, make this video to share my story of the most difficult job that I've ever had in my entire life. I don't think I'll ever even come close to having a job as arduous as that one. And not only arduous, but so little reward, financial reward, and very little appreciation from people that uh, see these individuals busting their asses off literally day in and day out in a job that just simply is not worth it. Anyway, Thank you so much for watching my video. As always, I want to thank you and extend my gratitude for uh, watching the video to the very end, if you're still watching, that is. And I will talk to you on the next one. Thank, take care.